707, please. 707. We'll sing the first and the third. First and the third. To Christ be loyal and be true, better be and flirt, and born aloft till is secure the conquest of the world. To Christ the Lord be true, for he will go with you. Christ the Lord be true, to Christ be Lord, go and be true, and noble service prove your faith and your fidelity, the fervor of your love, to Christ the Lord be true. To Christ the Lord be true. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see each of you and of course, those that are watching and worshiping with us online tonight, we're glad that you're with us. It's good to see you. It's been a long day and a busy day and a good day, all rolled into one. Uh, order of worship tonight, uh, Jim Galloway will continue to be our song director. Jimmy Galloway will lead our, read our scripture. John Life will have our opening prayer. Doug Wells will be in the pulpit tonight, and Paul Inman will be doing communion in room 109, and then Josh Hall will close us out in prayer. Uh, a few announcements, especially about our sick lists and events here at Camden Avenue. Uh, prayer list, please keep Jeff Fitcher on there. Ron, that's Ron Holler and son-in-law. Lenore Vaught, Bill Camp, who's recovering from surgery, and Jenny Reynolds, who is in Marietta Memorial. Please remember them, as well as two additions we had today, and these uh, are relatives of Cindy Huxley. Her, her niece's half-sister, Missy Wilson, is in a Morgantown hospital, and Missy's mom, Norma, the last report was that she was in ICU here, so please keep all of these in your prayers. Um, Remember the uh, Camden Avenue picnic will be Saturday, June 5th at DuPont Park. Gather at noon and eat at 1. Next Sunday night will be our Camden Avenue graduate recognition night. Uh, again, that's 523 after the evening service. Uh, youth event that I talked about this morning at Lubeck on June the 5th. Evidence revealed. There's more information on these youth events out here on this board as well. Please remember that. Uh, our sympathy is extended to the Helen Miller family. Uh, her funeral was Thursday, so please remember them in the loss of Helen. Uh, also to the Drain family, of course, the service was held this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We continue to extend our sympathy to you in the loss of Denzel. Um, Remember the Connect Conference, June 2nd through 5th. Uh, it's a conference about evangelism held in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Mark's planning that or taking the lead in planning it. Uh, he's got an itinerary already that he handed me tonight. So uh, always looking for more to come. Uh, if, you, if you would like to come or if you have questions about that, please ask Mark. Um, Remember the grocery list or the requested grocery list for Potter's Children's Home. And the list is out on the table by door six. Uh, the due date for those items 
is um, June 6th. They will be here to pick those up. Just a couple other quick high-level events that are coming up. Uh, Mid-Ohio Valley Lectures will be June 23rd through 25th, and that will be at OVU. Um, as far as events here in the future, please mark your calendars. VBS, one day, Saturday, July 10th. Uh, we have planned a gospel meeting for this fall at Camden Avenue. David Price will be here. Uh, that will be October 3rd through 6th. So please mark your calendars to be a part of that. And then that same week on Saturday will be our Bible Bowl and, of course, on the book of Joshua. So I just wanted to hit a couple of those. Um, as we join in singing, um, I'll turn it back over to Jim as he leads us in our next song. One hundred and twenty one, please. One hundred and twenty one. Sing one, two, and four. One, two, and four. What are you doing, word or deed? Do all in the name of the Lord. Do not in name of man or creed. Do all in the name of the Lord. Do all in his name. Do all in the name of the Lord. In word or deed, as God decreed. Do all in the name of the Lord. Not deceived by worldly greed, do all in the name of the Lord. The Spirit said, Word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Do all in His name, do all in the name of the Lord. In word or deed, as God decreed. Do all in the name of the Lord. Till toils and labors here are done, do all in the name of the Lord. Dear Christian friends, if you be one, do all in the name of the Lord. Do all in his name, do all in the name of the Lord. And word or deed as God decreed, do all in the name of the Lord. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life, while restless sing day by day, a sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star, from each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, Days of toil and hours of age, still he calls in cares and pleasure. Christian, love me more than this.
Tonight I'll be reading from Mark, or excuse me, Luke chapter 5, verse 11. Luke chapter 5, verse 11. The verse will be coming from the American Standard Version. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left all and followed him. Let's pray. Your God and Father, we are so thankful that you've allowed us this other another opportunity to be here today to assemble and to be with fellow Christians, to let, learn and study more of your word. Father, we appreciate the uh, offering that your son gave for us by going to the cross for us and giving us hope for eternal life after our lives here are over. Father, we ask your blessings be with uh, those who we know who are in the hospitals at this time. Jeff Fitcher, Lenore Vaught, Bill Camp, Jenny Reynolds, and Miss, Missy Wilson and her mother Norma. We ask your blessings be with them and those who are taking care of them will be helping and assisting them in whatever their needs are. And Father, we are so thankful that uh, we've been able to know uh, Denzel Drain and Helen Miller here at Camden Avenue. Pray that you'll be with both those families, dear Father, at the, the passing of Denzel and Helen. Pray, God, that you will help to strengthen the families, to remember those that have, their families that have passed on for the great things they've done and the honor and glory that they've brought to your name. God, we ask you to be with our ministers here, Mark and Doug. <clears throat> we ask you to bless them and their families and the work that they're doing and make, may they continue for many years. God, we pray for our elders here, for Clayton and Paul and Jim and Todd. Pray that your blessings be with them and the decisions they make will be uh, able to assist each one of us to further our paths towards heaven. Father, we also pray for the deacons here and their work and their service and their families along with all the other families here at Camden Avenue. Father, we pray that you bless us all. Help us to be the best we can in serving for you. And Father, we pray for our country at this time, for the things that are going on not only in our area, but in other areas of the world. God, we pray for peace. We know it takes more than just one country to be trying to advance peace. It takes all countries. We pray that they will see the way by following Christian examples and those who are there in the countries trying to help them out to give them the opportunities for peace. Father, we're thankful for those who are serving us in our militaries and our medical fields and those who have been striving to help us get through this COVID situation. And Father, we're glad that things are starting to ease up and we pray it will continue, but only if we're smart about the things we do and the way that we treat ourselves and others around us. God, we ask that you be with us uh, through the rest of this day, through this time we're here. Pray that you'll be with us through our lives, hoping that you'll find us faithful at the end of our life when our time here on earth is over. Through your son's name we pray. Amen. No, 658, please. 658. <clears throat> Sing the first and the last verse, please. Six, the first and the last. much to do, there's work on every hand, hark the cry for help comes longing through the land, Jesus calls for reapers, I must have to be, what will thou, O Master, hear him I send me, Souls who 
linger on the brink of woe. Lord, I must, I cannot bear to let them go. Let me go and tell them, brother, turn and fly. Master, I would save them here in ice and me. number number 29 29 good evening church It's good to good to see you all here. It's wonderful to be here. Hmm. Here we go. So, long-term investments can be a good thing. In fact, I might even go so far to say that they're part of good financial stewardship. Uh, as Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 11.2, Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. You see, it turns out that if you spend less than you make and you put that money away and invest it in something, or better yet, a few things, you're better prepared for what happens next. That's good biblical wisdom, and it works in practice. So are you listening to me, young people? This is especially true when you're young. It makes the most difference when you're young. Uh, let's say the day comes when you get uh, your first really good job. Okay, maybe this, this happens at uh, about 25 or something like that. And you end up making about $50,000 a year. And let's say that you're one of those rare, 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 extremely rare few people who decide that they're going to invest 10% of what they make. Generally, if a job doesn't make you do this, you don't do it. But let's say you're smart, and you do. And you invest 10% of what you make, and that's about 5000 a year. You put it in a Roth IRA or something like that and you end up making a modest 8% on your money, uh, which is not unreasonable in a Roth IRA. You start at 25, and you do this for 30 years up to age 55. At that point, can you guess how much money you have saved up in your, in your Roth IRA? You have $612,000 and uh, $218. That, that's how much money, $612,000. Now, maybe you see that number and you're thinking, you're, you're kicking yourself a little bit. Why didn't I do that? You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to do. I get it. Uh, but you see the value, I hope. You see the value in that. You commit a little now. You invest a little now. You give up a little you could have had now and something else. And you get a whole lot back later. Of course, we're not here tonight to just talk about, you know, financial investments. That's not really what we come to church for. Uh, no, we're here to talk about a different kind of commitment. It involves money, but oh, so much more too. Uh, tonight ends our series that I've been preaching on committing to God. I would like to thank each and every single one of you. I don't know who you are because we did this anonymously, but whoever you are, I thank every single one of you who decided to make a commitment to God for this year, the year of 2021. And as I look at all these, I can't help but think that your renewed dedication uh, may have inspired somebody else to renew their dedication at all. Whether they actually wrote it down or not, 
Uh, maybe somebody reading the bulletin said, you know what, I want to make that commitment too, uh, e even if they didn't actually put it in there. But you can see in that list there, these are all the commitments that were made this year by people here at Camden Avenue or, or perhaps visitors. Uh, and you can see that we have committed to all kinds of things, things like loving God and serving God and guarding our hearts and loving mercy and outreach and enthusiasm and and a bunch of other things besides. I see a lot of Bible uh, studiers and, and Bible readers in here. Uh, looks great. I, I'm very glad that you decided to do that. For this last lesson tonight, I want to talk to you about investment. Not the 10% investment in your financial future, as smart as that is to do. No, I'm talking about a commitment that's a little more involved, a little more involved than that. I want to encourage you in 2021 to commit all to God, to commit all, uh, everything, commit it all. I encourage you in a full act of submission to tell God everything that I have, Everything that I am is yours, Lord. Use it however you wish. Now, I'm encouraging that tonight. I think that is a wonderful thing. But to put it bluntly, that's not an optional thing for Christians. This commitment is not optional. I, I am encouraging you tonight to give your all to God. But my encouragement is only for you to do what you must do. In order to follow Jesus, you must do what many have done before you. If you turn to Luke chapter 5, you can see how, how Jesus came to call Peter and James and John. And he told them that their calling was now to catch men. And here's how they responded in Luke 5.11. So they pulled their boats up on the shore and they left everything and followed him. They left everything. They left their boats. They left their nets. They left their fathers, <laughs> is, is something that it says there in the text. They left all, everything. Jesus called them to follow, and that was the price, all. Jesus goes a little bit down the road, and he sees a man named Levi sitting in the tax booth, and he simply says, follow me. And here's what Levi did. And Levi got up, verse 28, he left everything, and he followed him. Left everything. You know, I think there are some small differences in everybody's walk uh, with Jesus. It doesn't always look exactly the same. I mean, our situation today is, is different in a a few ways than it was in, in New Testament times when Jesus walked the earth. And so, you know, following Jesus won't look exactly the same in different times and different places with different people. That's not to say that the word is any different. The word is the same for everybody, and it's always true. But other things like culture and family situations, you know, uh, spiritual opportunities, uh, gifts, these things can be a little bit different for everybody. So I, I'm not trying to say that in America today that following Jesus will always mean that you have to pack up your family and leave your home and your, and your job behind. Uh, but it might. It might. You know, a, a couple years ago it did for me. And four years before that also. I think the question really is whether or not we are willing. Are we willing to leave all if that's what Jesus wants us to do? For some people in the Bible that you can read about, he did. For Levi, for Peter, for John, for Andrew, and for many others, that is exactly what Jesus wanted from them. To leave all their worldly things behind to physically follow him as they participated in his ministry. That's what he wanted. That's what they paid. They were called to commit all, to commit everything. And then they had the opportunity to prove it, that they really had committed that. 
If they hadn't committed all, they never would have left. They wouldn't have left their boats, their nets, their fathers, their tax booths. They would not have left those things had they not committed all. Uh, but they did. And, and then there are other examples in Scripture of people who were willing to commit a lot, but not all. The famous one of, is, of course, the rich young ruler. He was willing to commit a lot. For example, he was willing to commit to all the commandments. And that's not a small commitment, really. I mean, to commit to always being faithful to your, to your spouse, to honor your parents, to never you know, steal or lie. Uh, this is a big commitment to commit to the commandments, I'd say. And, and this ruler says, uh, this is Luke 18, 21, he says, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. Now, I can't help but wonder in this room how many people could actually say that same thing. I mean, even if we adjust a little bit for New Testament times and we call, you know, Sunday the Christian Sabbath uh, to adjust that one a little bit, even if we do that, how many people in here could say that they have kept all of the commandments, you know, ever since they were a child? That is a big commitment. Is it not? That's a big thing, I'd say. He was, he was very committed in that way. But you know what Jesus says to him? I bet you do. He says basically, good, but you're not there yet. One thing you lack, he says to him. He says to him that those who want to follow me have to be willing to commit all. Luke chapter 18, verse 22, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. And he can't do it. He can't do it. He went away sad, Mark tells us. He's sad because he realizes, I want to follow Jesus. I think I should follow Jesus but I don't want to commit all these possessions that I have. I'm not willing to give it up. Uh, maybe he wished that he, he was willing, but he just, he couldn't do it. He wasn't ready to commit all. Jesus knew it. That's why he told him that. And so the rich young ruler walks away sad. You know, what Jesus expects of us is not unreasonable. Yes, it sounds like a lot to commit all. I get that. That sounds like a lot. But this is Jesus that we're talking about. I mean, why would we expect the requirement to be anything less than that? In fact, there are many kinds of commitments in this life, in this world, that a, uh, something very close to 100% dedication to that commitment is required uh, for it to work. Uh, imagine sitting in a job interview, for example. Uh, you are trying to get a really good job. It's got nice pay, wonderful benefits. And uh, the thing is, though, it requires a 24-7 on-call commitment. You maybe know of a job. Maybe you have a job like that where it just that's just what it requires, a 24-7 on-call commitment. If they need you, they can call you and you have to be there. This is one of those jobs that you're, you're interviewing for. Maybe uh, it's a hospital. You're, you want to work for a hospital, and they want to know if you're going to be around. Uh, and you know, maybe you know how to save somebody, and they want to make sure that you're going to answer the phone when they call you and they ask you how to do it. Okay? You go to that job interview. You sit there, and they ask you questions about how committed you are. What if you say to them, Yes, I'm willing to be committed to this job requiring a 24-7 commitment, but only partially. Only partially. I'm not answering my phone or coming in Thursday through Saturday. That's me time. Now, if you were to say that to them, what are the odds that you get that job? Do you get that job? No. No. You don't get it. It's not going to happen. No way. And married people, let's think about that for a minute. 
Let's talk about your marriage commitment. Is that a partial commitment, your marriage? Is that a partial commitment? I know. <laughs> Be careful what you say if you're sitting right next to your spouse. Is that, is that a partial commitment? Would it work if it was? Try and imagine me all those years ago getting down on one knee and asking Ray Ann, will you marry me? I want to be there for you Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Saturday. I've got another girl for the rest of the time. But, but for that amount of time, you know, uh, baby, I want to be 100% committed to you 50% of the time. If that was my proposal, do you think she would have said, <laughs> I can't imagine Ray or any girl with any self-respect at all uh, to say yes to that proposal. Uh, I have a much easier time imagining getting smacked upside my head. Uh, you know, I just, I just can't picture a yes there. Why? Because partial commitments don't work. Partial commitments don't work for marriages. They don't work for businesses. They don't work for friendships. You know, yeah, I'll be your friend, but listen, when I'm with my other friends every Wednesday, I'm going to talk about you. Uh, yeah, that, that's not going to work. Uh, partial commitment in that way. So why would we ever think a partial commitment would be good enough for Jesus? Why would we think that? No, for Jesus, we must commit all. We have to commit all. And that's not even a lot to ask in the grand scheme of things. You know, I think that committing all to Jesus is a good investment for your future. Go ahead and switch to the next slide there. I think it's a good investment for your future. So much so that it's a joy to surrender all. Listen to this from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 and 45. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Now, do you get what happened there? This guy is pumped. <laughs> it is a joy to do all that he has. It is a joy to sell the house, to sell the slightly used chariot. It is a joy to sell the family dog in order to get this field. He sold everything to get this field that had this treasure hidden in it. And the reason is, is because the value of that treasure was worth more than everything that he had, everything that he gave up. He sold a little bit now so that you can have a lot more later. You know, when Jesus says to commit all to me, one of the things that he includes is money. There's no getting around that. He's including money. He's including our possessions. A time may very well come, as I'm sure it will, when following Jesus means that you use your income or something that you have to help somebody else out. Like... Like if your mother needs medical supplies that she can't afford, it is not a very large stretch for me to biblically say that Jesus would want you to help your mother out with those, with those supplies that she can't afford that she needs. And, and what are you giving up, really? Giving up temporary treasure, uncertain treasure. There's no guarantees to what we have in, in this world. Ultimately, I think that money itself is, is meaningless. All that's really going to end up mattering is what you did with it. How did you use it? Did you use it for God? Oh, I think that's the only way you can make it last. That's the only way you can invest it to where you have, do you have more later. We are called to commit our time, commit our money, uh, commit even our families to the cause of Christ. We're called to commit and it's not for nothing. You know, there was a moment in Peter's life when he had a minor moment of doubt in the value of following Jesus. 
he doubted for a minute whether or not it was worth it. You could tell from what he says. He, he cries out to the Lord in Luke 18, 28. Uh, we have left all we had to follow you. We left it all. And, and Peter is asking here, I think, you know, was it all for nothing? Well, Jesus' reply to him tells us, no, it was not. Verses 29 and 30. I tell you the truth, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. Jesus tells Peter that his sacrifice is an investment in his future. It's an investment for his future. Because he had committed all, Jesus is telling him he's going to be rewarded for that. And that's really the only kind of commitment that will do. Uh, if your commitment to Christ has caused you some kind of loss, you gave up something for Jesus, uh, if, you, if you lost anything, God will notice that. You know, whatever it may be, your money, your time, your efforts, God will notice that, and he will repay you someday. Uh, if you are his, I think the Bible makes that clear. You know, if your full commitment to Jesus leads you to buy a hundred hot dogs for the poor, God sees. If your full commitment to Jesus leads you to go two miles instead of one mile, I think God will count every step. If your full commitment to Jesus you know, leads you uh, to, to live in such a way that your earthly father disowns you, God knows, and he will be your father. See, it's, it's worth it, I think. Tonight... I'm not going to waste your time by asking for anything less than a full commitment to God. A commitment where you give all. That's, that's what Jesus asks. That's what I'm encouraging, for you to give all to God. Now, if you haven't done so, a wonderful image of this is when somebody decides to repent of their old life, and to be baptized into Christ. And then as you do that, the, the image is, is that you are lowered into water, that you die to yourself, and you are lifted again into a new kind of life where you are living not for yourself, but you have committed yourself fully to the Lord. If you haven't done that yet tonight, we certainly give you the opportunity to do so. Uh, and even if you have done that, but it really was only a partial commitment at the time, you know, you're only going to give God so much, but definitely not all, then I would encourage all of you, surrender your whole world and gain your soul. And if you're ready to do that tonight, I invite you to come forward as we stand and sing. to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my Blessed Savior, 
up here with my other one that I left the first time I was up here. Thank you, Doug, for that lesson and that series. We'll be looking forward to see what your next series might be. So thank you so much. Again, good to see everybody out, especially our visitors. I see the Stitt clan back there. It's good to see you guys. I haven't seen you all for a long time. And uh, others that are with us today or tonight, we're glad that you've come our way. If there are some that in our audience tonight that has, have not been able to partake of the Lord's Supper, if you'll go out door number five toward room 109, Paul Inman will meet you there and he'll be presiding at the Lord's table at that time. Again, the church will meet Wednesday night again at 7 o'clock for Bible class. Trust everyone has a good week. Uh, just want to read one verse before we turn it back over to Jim for a closing song, and then Josh will close us in prayer. But about our week, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Why? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Four hundred thirty four verses one, two, and three. <clears throat> more holiness give me, more strivings with them, more patience and suffering, more sorrow for sin, more faith in my Savior, more sense of His care, more joy in His service, more purpose in prayer, more gratitude give me, more trust in the Lord, more pride in His glory, more hope in His word, more tears for His sorrows, more pain in His grief, more make us in trial, more praise for more purity give me, more strength to come, more freedom from earth's days, more longings for home, more fit for his kingdom, more useful I'd be. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this day, God, to come together 
to worship you, to share our love and our faith with you, God. Uh, we, we pray that you help us, God, to be committed to you fully uh, throughout our week. Uh, we pray that uh, you help us to take the lessons we heard today from Mark and Doug and apply them to our lives. Uh, dear God, we thank you for sending your son to this earth to die for our sins and that we may live with you in heaven one day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.